Hello mountain bikers, welcome back to your favorite gear show. With the riding season in full swing here in the Northern Hemisphere, hopefully you're out on the trails as much as possible and not stuck inside watching stuff on your screen. But if you are, you might as well be watching me. I've got a ton of stuff to talk you through today, but before we dig into all of these reviews, protection, tires, pedals, shoes, tools, time for our customary industry news roundup with a month in a minute. Actually, this time it's gonna be more like two months in two minutes. Buckle up. Santa Cruz just launched the sixth version of their Nomad, now with mixed wheels and a convenient storage compartment in the frame. All big wheels for big speed with Niner's new RKT9 RDO. Transition's new relay can be ridden both in assisted and non-assisted mode thanks to Fazua's lightweight motor and easily removable battery. Pivot has jumped on the lightweight e-bike train too with their new Shuttle SL, also featuring the Fazua 60Nm motor but mated to a battery that's not meant to be easily removable here. Trek is also shaking things up in the lightweight e-bike game with their Fuel EXE, featuring a new near-silent TQ motor that impressed our testers. Check out the full review right here on our channel for more. If it's a full-size EMTB you're after, EVO's new Apocalypse ticks all the boxes with a 603 watt hour battery and 85 newton meters of torque. And to wrap up all this e-bike news, Shimano has made major updates to their e-bike specific shifting tech to now offer systems that allow you to shift without pedaling or that shift automatically for you while coasting. The updates include motor units and DI2 shifters and derailers. Back in the analog world, Nukeproof has introduced a limited edition series of frames equipped with the latest high-end coil shocks and featuring unique paint jobs. Gorilla Gravity wants you to know that their frames are now available in more colors than just black. They have an updated Nirvana frame too, with a carbon swing arm and updated hardware features. Rossignol is making moves to improve the availability of their bikes via direct-to-consumer distribution model in Europe and the UK. Giro has launched their all-new Insurgent full-face helmet, utilizing the company's spherical technology to mitigate the effects of rotational forces on the brain. The new helmet is also lighter than the company's previous full-face, the Disciple. In other helmet news, Laser's new Cage Kinetikor is the first full-face helmet to receive an official 5-star rating from Virginia Tech. Marzocchi has just introduced a simple yet hard-charging bomber air shock and it has already left a good impression on our testers. Maxis has added about 200 grams and made some other changes to its forecaster tire, which now takes aim squarely at the downcountry or light trail bike category. Rocky Mounts has launched its new guide rail hitch rack, which can carry up to 120 pounds of load on two trays and which offers best-in-class security thanks to an integrated 10mm square link chain. Wolftooth has another color option for their remote and remote light dropper levers, olive green. 1UP has launched a completely new dropper lever called the V3, featuring a replaceable thumb pad, integrated cable port and seven colors to pick from. Autoleave and POC have joined forces to develop an airbag system for helmets. Could this be relevant to the future of mountain bike helmets? Time will tell. Magura has introduced a new version of its MT7 brake for the North and South American markets. The lever blade was redesigned with input from downhill world champ Loic Bruni. Based on a next generation polymer dispersion, Panzer has created a new sealant made specifically to work well with tire inserts. And to conclude, Look has just released two new flat pedals made in France, one composite and one alloy version developed together with Slopestyle and Freeride ace Thomas Genon. Whew, that was a lot to get through, but get through it we did. And now it's time to move on to the reviews. When Goodyear entered the mountain bike market in 2018, quite a few eyebrows were raised as it's always exciting to see what a major tire manufacturer can bring to the table. We were reasonably pleased with the initial lineup, although we noted at the time that we felt like a bit of bite and grip were perhaps lacking. Fast forward to today and Goodyear has just introduced two new versions of the Newton, dubbed the MTF and the MTR. Inspired by motocross, these front and rear specific tires feature different profiles and tread patterns to optimize their effectiveness at both ends of your bike, respectively. Since every new tire release is immediately followed by a tidal wave of looks like something something comments, we're going to get ahead of the game here. The MTF looks a lot like a Continental Der Baron with Michelin Wild Enduro side knobs, while the MTR is oh so close to a Maxxis DHR2. The sipes are slightly different in each case, but it's clear to see where the tread patterns came from. The front MTF tire features an elongated tire footprint, which should translate to improved straight line control while providing a greater contact patch for braking. The rear MTR tire features a much more square profile with uniform and more closely spaced outer knobs meant to provide greater traction and confidence inspiring transition between center tread to side knobs. On the compound side, Goodyear has three distinct combinations in play here. Dynamic Grip 3S, a front-specific triple-density 40-42-60A compound. Dynamic Grip 3, a rear-specific triple-density 40-50-60A compound. And Dynamic Trail 2, a trail-specific dual-density 50-60A compound. Each of the two new tread patterns exist in three different models, Trail, Enduro and DH. The website has a helpful system to help you pick the right tread, compound and casing for your needs. Mounted up, the MTF makes a very round shape on the rim, while the MTR is distinctly more squared off. 
both tires were easy to seat with just a floor pump and have held air remarkably well during the few months we've been testing so far. Rolling speed is fairly average. The Enduro setup we've been running is neither very fast nor very slow. The tires are not sluggish while climbing and rolling on flatter trails, but they are no speed weapons either. Rougher and steeper trails is what these tires were really made for, and that is indeed where they shine. The casing is fairly heavy to the touch when you install the tires, but this does not translate to a stiff ride at all. In fact, we were immediately surprised by the amount of comfort on offer from such a sturdy construction, even with lots of air in them, at the start of the test. This comfort translates to more confidence, as these tires really allow you to pick a line and hold it, no matter how rough the surface is. Disclaimer, we've only tested in the dry so far. Cornering and braking traction is excellent, and the tires feel great when transitioning from the center to the side knobs. Off-camber sections pose no problem at all, and we were once again impressed by how these tires blend comfort and support. The sidewall seems sturdy enough to deal with low tire pressures, without leaving the tires feeling squirmy, and we have no cuts or flats to report even after quite a few rocky rides. All in all, we're very impressed with the new MTF and MTR tires, and we feel like Goodyear has finally come up with a pair of serious contenders now for anything from trail riding to downhill. Troy Lee's Raid Nigard has been around for a while, but the company has just introduced some key updates that we wanted to bring to your attention. First and foremost, they've gone from a three-size range to a five-size range, providing a bit more granularity, which should translate to a better fit for more people. They've also made the body of the guard taller up top to aid with retention, and they have reinforced the elastic Velcro strap up top again to help make sure the guard stays in place while riding and potentially crashing. The main protective D3O pad is now CE certified to level 2, an improvement from the previous version, which carried a level 1 rating. Other than that, the guard still features a generous amount of side impact protection all around the knee joint and a ventilated rear panel to improve breathability. When it comes to sizing, we tested the size L, which we found quite comparable to the previous size ML. Note that if you found the previous guard a bit too big, go for the smaller of the two applicable sizes in the new size range. On the trail, the RAID remains a very comfortable guard in action, it's fairly soft on the skin and it does a good job of following your movements as you pedal and move around on the bike. The breathability is decent, not best in class, but certainly acceptable in light of the amount of protection on offer. If comfort and safety are high on your list of priorities and you're after a guard that you can wear both to the bike park and for more pedal intensive missions, you should certainly consider the updated RAID. Storing tools and spares in various nooks and crannies of the bike itself is becoming increasingly popular as riders look to ditch their packs and free up their backs. Granite Tools has a few different solutions on offer and today we'll be looking at the Stash Ratchet, a steerer tube tool with a twist. The Stash Ratchet features nine separate tool bits and a small ratchet wrench, all hidden away in your steerer tube. Unlike some other options on the market, the stash ratchet does not require tapping out the steerer tube. Instead, you remove the star nut and install the stash ratchet carrier, which then has two jobs to do, compressing the headset from both sides and providing storage space for the tool itself. The carrier will work with modern oval steerer tubes thanks to its tapered shape. The installation is easy and the carrier is able to provide the required pressure to adjust your headset properly. The only caveat is that you'll need a long enough allen wrench to reach the bolt at the bottom of the carrier, but that's really not a big ask and something that many riders will certainly have access to. Once the carrier is on the bike, slide the toolkit inside it and twist the cover to secure it. The cover can be replaced with a bike computer mount for your Garmin, Wahoo or Brighton devices. Once installed, the ratchet tool delivers good performance. The toolkit is rattle free on the bike and accessing the tools when needed is very easy. The bits included are of high quality and the ratchet wrench feels very solid in action. We were surprised by the amount of torque such a small tool can generate, enough to open up fairly tight frame bolts and the like. We wouldn't rely on it to remove that rusty pair of pedals that's been stuck on your commuter bike for the last nine years, but other than that, it can deal with most jobs. The ratcheting function is convenient and can make accessing some bolts a bit easier, like grips for example. On the trail, the tool is functional. It's a bit fiddly to deal with the separate bits, but they are held in place with magnets, so it's easy enough to keep them in order. Compared to OneUp's EDC tool with the threadless carrier, the Stash Ratchet scores points with its unique ratchet wrench, which provides extra convenience in use and more torque, while OneUp's kit manages to include a few more tools in roughly the same amount of space. Notably a chain breaker, tire lever, and spoke wrench. Pick your poison. Flat pedal aficionados have been increasingly spoiled with good shoe options over the past few years, with several companies now providing properly sticky soles mated to high performance uppers. When it comes to BOA equipped models, however, the non clipped in crowd has traditionally been left wanting. Ride Concepts is helping ride the ship with the introduction of the Talak BOA. We've already reviewed the non BOA version of the Talak and we found it to be excellent. Looking over the features quickly, we find a thick sole and an aggressive tread pattern that wraps around the toe and heel areas, while the profile of the rest of the shoe remains fairly slim. The uppers are made from Cordura mesh, marking the first time the two companies collaborate. 
The midsole features a thick EVA foam layer for extra cushion and support, while the insole sports the usual Ride Concepts D3O inserts to help further with impact absorption and fatigue reduction. Ride Concepts went with their stickiest rubber compound, Max Grip, for the Talak. The hexagons are bigger than on other Ride Concepts shoes. The overall fit of the Talak is ever so slightly more relaxed than the Hellion Elite, for example. The Cordura mesh uppers are more flexible than the synthetic leather used by the company in many of their other models, which provides a degree of extra comfort and makes the Talak feel a bit more like a sneaker. The addition of the BOA lacing system brings all the convenience of the famous ratcheting dial to this flat pedal platform, and we love it. It's super easy to put on and take off the shoe, and the BOA system is very good at distributing the pressure evenly over your foot when you sink it down. The extra strap over the toe area can be used to further adjust the fit as needed, in action, the non-BOA and the BOA models feel very similar, with good power transfer and a high degree of comfort. The grip, delivered by the Max Grip rubber, is great. Plenty of surface stickiness and plenty of lugs for your pedals to grab hold of. In our unscientific opinion, the larger lugs found on the Talak sole work even better than those found on other models. The result is a shoe that delivers a fraction less grip than current market leaders 510 and Specialized, but it's getting oh so close now. In very muddy conditions, you might feel a bit less connected with the Ride Concepts rubber, but not by a whole lot. The thick sole provides plenty of cushion as well, great for those harsh landings or foot out flat out moments. If you're sensitive to pedal height in general, you might find these a bit tall for your liking though. The Talak breathes well, and hiking performance is also very good with enough compliance in the shoe to allow it to conform to the terrain and bend in the toe area as your foot pivots during the step. Protection is adequate thanks to the TPU reinforcements, although the Cordura mesh feels a bit less sturdy than some other synthetic leather type of materials, which may leave the top of the foot a bit more exposed to direct impact. We'd have no real qualms about using the Talak for all kinds of riding though, up to and including the bike park. An interesting option, for sure. PNW Components jumped into the flat pedal game earlier this year with the aluminum loam pedal. Even though that pedal offers great value at just 99 US dollars, PNW figured they could make something even more affordable by introducing a composite option as well. Say hello to the new range. Just like the loam, the range offers a somewhat unorthodox take on certain aspects of flat pedal design. The shape tapers off towards the outside, and the pedal body itself is convex instead of concave. The idea behind these design choices is to reduce the footprint of the shape towards the outside of the pedal to help minimize the risk of hanging up on trailside obstacles. There are 11 pins spread around the outside of the pedal body, held in place by small sunk steel nuts. The pins are long enough to make up for the lack of concavity in the pedal body, although not by much. The range uses one cartridge bearing and one roller bearing, with an inboard bushing completing the axle system. Full service kits are available, should you need a rebuild in the future. To make sure you can find a good match to your bike's look, seven color options are on offer, ranging from wild to stealthy. Much like with the loam pedal we tested previously, we were a bit surprised by the amount of grip provided by the range. The sharp pins make up for the convex body shape, and when mated with a particularly sticky sole, like the Specialized 2FO, these pedals performed very well in the dry for us. With a somewhat less sticky sole, the results were not quite as good. Also note that this shape will reach the limits of grip sooner in the wet, thanks to the prominent ridge running all the way along the spindle. When mud builds up, this ridge can become quite slippery. Other than that, the generous shape is confidence inspiring and the pedal spins smoothly underfoot. At 49 US dollars, it's pretty much a steal too. All right then, that's the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for taking the time to tune in. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.